want an Apple Watch, but choosing between the Series 9 and the Ultra 2 is kind of confusing, right? Welcome, you've come to the right place because we're comparing everything about these two watches from screens, battery life, double tap, and all the other parts in between. Your number one consideration, probably the price. To make things easy, the Ultra 2 is in one size and just one price, $799 in the US. The Series 9 is a bit more complicated because it has two sizes in different finishes and it starts at $399. So spend more for the Ultra 2 or less for the Series 9? Let's go. They say size doesn't matter, but maybe it does on your wrist. The Ultra 2 has a 49mm titanium case with a flat display, and there's no two ways about it. It's big. My wrist is 152mm, and even though it looks a bit large on me, it actually is really comfortable on a small wrist, and I wear it all the time without any problems. Enter the Series 9. This watch looks much the same as earlier Apple Watches, with either a 41 or 45mm size and curved front glass. It definitely sits more flush with your wrist and is a little bit more incognito. Now, even though the case of the Ultra 2 is bigger, does that mean the screen itself is any bigger compared to the larger Series 9? the 45 millimeters. Yes, it actually is by a small amount in both physical size and resolution. You'll see when we boost the text size to the maximum on both, the Series 9 cuts it off a tiny bit at the edge. And don't forget screen brightness because the Ultra 2's screen gets brighter than the Series 9 at 3000 nits versus 2000. Indoors or outdoors, you'll have no issues seeing the Series 9 and honestly, you'd probably never notice the difference if you never saw them right next to each other. But that is the whole point of this video. You get to see them together and the Ultra 2 is definitely brighter outside. Plus the flashlight on the Ultra 2 gets an extra boost of brightness to the maximum when you turn the digital crown. You can turn the crown on the Series 9, but it doesn't do anything to boost the brightness on the flashlight. For durability, the Ultra 2 is designed to be a tougher watch. The titanium case is slightly raised to give more edge protection to that sapphire crystal display. The Series 9 display actually has two different coverings depending on what case material you choose. It's Ion X glass if you get the aluminum, or as I would say, aluminium version, or sapphire crystal on the stainless steel version. Now both are IP6X dust resistant and they're both water resistant as well, but the Ultra 2 can go to 100 meters compared to 50 meters and it does have some exclusive diving features we will talk about very soon. The Ultra 2 has one more big design feature that sets it apart from the Series 9. Consider this my love letter to the action button. You can press it to quickly launch your favorite workout or maybe launch the flashlight or the stopwatch. But my favorite is using it to trigger a shortcut, which is a quick way of accessing a favorite feature or task in an app. Whether it's directions to work or maybe rickrolling yourself, look, the action button can do it all. All is not lost though on the Series 9. You can still set a complication on the watch face to launch a shortcut if that's your jam. It's just not as cool as having a real button. The buzzy feature on both these watches is double tap, a way you can do this to control your watch. Raise your wrist and double tap to reply to a message with dictation, then double tap to send it, all without needing to touch the watch with the other hand. It's actually really helpful and accurate with the action working in many of Apple's first party apps. You can also answer a call, change tracks, or start and stop timers. If you have a third party app, it's generally gonna perform the default action when you do the double tap action. Now, this works exactly the same on both watches because they run the same chip. On device Siri is also the same, which means that it doesn't have to ping the cloud when you ask the voice assistant to do something that doesn't require the internet. What that means is things like starting a workout or setting a timer. Okay, let's talk about smart features. You're gonna have the same experience using either of these watches as watchOS is the same. Both have a comprehensive selection of apps, a full-size keyboard for text input, speech-to-text dictation, and 64 gigabytes of storage, which is great if you like to add a lot of music to your watch. Both have the second generation ultra wideband chip. That means you can find your phone from the watch with precision finding. One catch, as long as you have an iPhone 15 or later. If you do have an older iPhone, you just ping your phone from your watch to make it ring, just like older Apple Watches. 
Now the Ultra 2 does have two exclusive watch faces, Wayfinder and Modular Ultra. These fit a lot on the screen and are really customizable. Plus the Ultra 2 has a night mode and that automatically turns both of these watch faces red when it detects it's dark outside. Both have an LTE option so you can make calls and stay connected when you're away from your phone. Now it is available by default if you buy the Ultra, but you do need to pay extra if you want the LTE version of the Series 9. Now don't forget, you'll also need to pay a fee to your wireless provider on top of your existing phone plan to activate LTE from the watch so you can actually take calls when you're out away from the phone because there's no such thing as a free lunch. Regardless of whether you have your phone with you or you're using LTE on the watch, calls sound really good on both. But the Ultra 2 does have dual speakers, so it's louder and a three mic array, so it should sound better in windy and outdoor situations. See if you can hear the difference. This is the same call conditions as the Ultra 2, but now on the Series 9. These watches are super similar in health tracking with a temperature sensor, blood oxygen sensor, ECG or electrocardiogram app, as well as the option to give you high and low heart rate alerts and irregular heart rhythm alerts. And the heart rate sensor is also exactly the same. Good news is the Apple Watch heart rate sensor is very accurate when it's compared to a chest strap. Fitness tracking, also identical. Are you getting sick of me saying that yet? Keep track of your progress using the Apple Watch rings and track the same comprehensive list of workouts in the app of the same name. Or you can download third-party workout apps if that's more your style. You can also connect Bluetooth accessories like power meter pedals to both watches, create multi-sport workouts, and keep an eye on your heart rate zones, just as scratching the surface of all of the things you can do with the workout app. You also get a compass app, back track and waypoint functionality on both, plus car crash detection, fall detection, and emergency SOS. Everything's the same, right? Actually, here is something that's different. The Ultra 2 has an 86 decibel siren for safety and a wider operating range than the Series 9. It also has specific features for scuba and underwater use with a depth app and compatibility with the Oceanic Plus app that turns the watch into a dive computer. Make sure to check out my colleague Jesse's amazing scuba video for more on how the Ultra works underwater. You can watch that right up here. GPS performance is also different with the Ultra using both L1 and L5 bands and the Series 9 just using L1. Now that is a lot of acronyms. What you really need to know is the Ultra 2 is more accurate at tracking distance and route information in built up areas such as the city thanks to that dual band GPS. Now the Ultra 2 knocks the Series 9 out of the park when it comes to battery life. Now it doesn't matter how you use this watch, whether you're running a marathon or just using it to, you know, tell the time and get notifications, it's still got the Series 9 beat. Now, official ratings put the Series 9 at 18 hours of runtime and the Ultra 2 at 36 hours. But honestly, Apple is really underplaying this because you can stretch both a lot longer. With what I'd call regular use, notifications from the phone, the always on display, a one hour GPS workout and sleep tracking, you can get a day and a half from the Series 9 before charging. With that same usage pattern, I can get closer to three days from the Ultra 2. Now both have a low power mode to extend the battery even further, but of course your mileage will vary depending on how you use your watch. And resource intensive tasks like using LTE a lot and listening to music over Bluetooth will also deplete your battery sooner. Both also support fast wireless charging as long as you have the 18 watt or higher adapter. It is not included in the box as an FYI. Here is a side by side to see how fast they both charge from flat to full. Now it's time to pick your winner. But too long, didn't watch and just want the answer. These smartwatches are very different on the outside, but surprisingly very similar on the inside. If price is your main consideration, the Series 9 is going to do pretty much everything you need. It shares the same chip and overall software feature set as the Ultra 2 for a lot less cash. You'll just need to charge it a bit more often. But if money was no object, I can't go past the Apple Watch Ultra 2 for two main reasons. Number one, the long battery life. So I don't have to have that battery anxiety about needing to charge it if I don't put it on the charger at the end of every day. And two, the action button, because I'm never gonna give that up. 
Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was super helpful for you in working out which one is the right buy for you. As always, love to answer your questions down in the comments below. Find me on your favorite social media platform and I will catch you next time. See ya.